morning everyone how are you i hope you're really really well um and today is the second daily dose of karen you like that title so we're keeping that so join me at the side of the intro i'm going to do some question and answers today we are and i'm going live from my phone so i don't really know everything you've asked me yet so that'll be fun so join me at the other side of the intro and let's see what questions you've asked you ready hit it maestro really really well I put my glasses on so I can see you all better um, yeah yeah day two in the UK it's nice and sunny um, yeah feels outside at the moment with the little puppies and I was gonna record outside but it's it's coming up to two o'clock and you know when the sun's starting to get quite it's high in the sky and it's starting to dip and I get all sorts of shading and he's got the radio on out there so we will go in the garden Tomorrow is meant to be jet washing it all, it is, it is. And uh, our house is actually built on, uh, it's like clay. It was an old school field and it's like clay. So we get an awful lot of rain in the UK anyway, but drainage is really hard. So all our slabs every year, we have to jet wash them. Um, yeah, yeah. So he's gonna do that. And then maybe I can show you the garden. So yes. Yeah, so. so let's have a look what questions you've asked me. So, some of them are, it's on my Facebook group and some of them are ideas for videos and some of them are questions, so. Uh, okay then, so, first question. Michelle knows that I'm only 27, I am. But when is your birthday? My birthday is actually, we call it Whitson in the UK. And uh, that's the holiday at the end of May. We, in the UK, our schools have end of term, um, which I think is your end of semester, I think in America, I think. Um, and we have half term, and I know in America they don't because they have 11 weeks off in the summer. Whereas we have six weeks off in the summer, but what we do is at the end of every term, we have two weeks holiday, and we have a one week break in the middle of each of the three terms. Sometimes it feels like the kids are at home more than they were at school, to be honest. Um, but I was born in half term, which is, the end of May. So yeah, Whitson is my birthday. I'm a Gemini. I am. I'm not two-faced. I've just got a split personality. <laughs> I'm either really happy or I can crash. Do you do that? So I can be really joyous one minute and then something can really upset me. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite interesting to live with. So yeah, so there's that. Uh, okay, so we've got that. What is my favorite restaurant? at Disney, which is my favorite, favorite restaurant. Well, it's always been Citrico's, um, but that was when I was a meat eater because I I loved their fillet steak. Um, and then they have the beautiful, beautiful sorbet dessert afterwards. And I just love that. And that Citrico's is actually based inside uh, the Grand Floridian. And uh, yeah, I love that. And it was actually on um, your dining plan so you could use a dining it was two dining credits but you could do that on the the Disney dining plan but yeah I love, I love it there yeah I really love it there um, and what's my favorite snack um, and the first thing that came to mind is the Cheshire cat tail I think no it's not no it's not it is dull whip with the pineapple upside down cake oh my word oh my word in Magic Kingdom if you've not tried it so it's like a Sunday pudding. So it's like a sponge with your pineapple in. I'm sure you're like in America and Australia, you know, upside down pineapple cake. And then you've got this, so that's quite tart. And then you've got the really sweet creaminess of the Dole Whip and oh. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're not hungry. You just gotta have that. We just, that's just, yeah. You just gotta get that one. Um, okay. Julia said, where do I see myself in five years? In five years, Julia, I will be preparing for my 21st birthday. <laughs> and I'm sharing it with Blake. 
I am currently 27. I am. And uh, at Whitson, the end of May, I am 26. But in five years, I'll be 21. Yeah, because, yeah. And then the year after, I'll be 20. Yeah, you with me? But anyway, we won't go into that. But that's my age. So, yeah, I'll be planning a birthday party. And I'd worked out originally, me and Savannah were both going to be 23 the same year. And she was horrified. She's like, Mom, <laughs> you really believe this? And I'm like, yeah, of course. So, but your birthday is May and mine's January. I said, we can have one in the middle, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll have a party together. We'll do a Duran Duran party and I'll have all the ruffles on and I can be dancing away. And she's like, Rick, <laughs> yeah, really. And then I went, Ooh. And she said, What? She said, I just realised me and Blake are going to be 21 together. <laughs> He's like, I don't think so. I'm like, I do. So yes, yeah, so that's where I'll be in five years' time. Okay, if you thought you were going to get a serious answer, Julia, you should know better. When did I first go to Walt Disney World, Sue asks. Right. In a different lifetime, because it feels like that, I was actually a retail manager. I was. And I was a manager for Woolworths. I was. And I was in a small suburb of Wolverhampton. So Grant, you'll know this. I actually was the manager of Wensfield. And uh, at the time, they used to put incentives on for the stores and for the store managers. And it should have really been for everyone, but they did, they did it for the store managers. Um, and it was to win a week's holiday to Disney World. And to win it, there were five regions in, in the company. So in our region, there was a, a, a winner and so there were five winners. And to win, you had to do the most pre-sales of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs when it first came out on video. So what that meant is that when someone came in to buy something, I don't know, some, some, some chocolate, we would have to set the till. We were taking reservations and pre-orders for Snow White. Would you be interested? It's only a pound and then you're guaranteed a copy. Yeah. My store, my wonderful team are, are, of, oh, I hate the word sales assistants, and my wonderful team, um, they, 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 they won it for me. And uh, yeah, it was, it was hard going to win, it was. And um, I, was, I was a bit strict, I was. I was like, you've got to ask everyone, everyone. I don't care how much it's been, everyone. And they did, and they did, bless them, they did. And um, I was 29. Gosh, I was older than I am today. So I'll figure that one out. And um, it was the year me and Phil were getting married and he got no more holiday left. And my mum was turning 60. And uh, I took my mum and we spent a week in Walt Disney World. And it was at the time of the, the car jackings. I don't know if you remember all of that. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to drive. Ooh. So we actually, instead of having a car, we had transport. And we stayed, we were on International Drive and we were opposite a Ponderosa. So I don't know if it was where the Holiday Inn is now, but we stayed there and we were there for a week. And I think they gave me a bit of spending money as well. I've got that in my head. Maybe they didn't, I don't know. And we had our tickets for a week. And for Universal, it was Universal, no, I had to buy Universal, it was just for Disney. But we went to Universal as well. And I actually went, it, we were there for June the 18th, because that was my mum's actual 60th birthday. And, uh, yeah, on a birthday, we went on the Back to the Future ride in King Kong in Universal Studios. I remember that clear as day, which obviously neither of those are, are there anymore. And uh, King Kong is it's in a different place and a different ride. The one we were in, we were in cages and suspended. That's what I can remember. Um, so yeah, that was yeah that was the first time I've ever actually been to America, and um, it was somewhere I never dreamt to go, and it was somewhere I never thought I'd have the chance of going. Um, even though I travelled extensively, it, it was always my dream. I wanted to work there and I was an overseas uh, holiday rep before that and I'd asked to work there and I'd been promised you'll work there, you'll work there. And it never came through and I ended up doing the first weddings in the Dominican Republic uh, for the company I worked for. And um, yeah, fabulous memories. Me and Mum, fabulous memories. Yeah, we fell out. We fell out in Hollywood Studios and... Uh, because my mum's a Gemini as well, so you can imagine. <laughs> when we're up, we're up, and when we're down, move out of the way. And, um, yeah, we had words. And so she hid from me in Hollywood Studios, but I was watching her. So I hid from her. <laughs> 
So she was hiding from me, but I was hiding watching her. It was so funny because she didn't know which hotel we were in. She had no money because I, I was looking after it. I took the role of my dad. And um, yeah, it was really funny. And we still laugh about that to this day. And uh, we'd been in to see them sketch. I think it was Pocahontas. They got the, the animation studio on the corner, which I think might be where Little Mermaid went. But anyway, yeah, so yeah, that was the first time. Okay. Which Disney World park is my favourite? Okay. I don't know if I can answer that one. I know which is my least favourite and that's Paris. Paris is my least favourite only because at the moment, currently it's like a park and a half because the studio's part, it's really shows and there's not a lot going on there. Um, once it's in the expansion, it'd be great. But at the moment, yeah. And Disney Village there is so run down, in my opinion, and it needs work doing. So that's my least favourite. If you'd have asked me this two weeks ago, before the virus took us over, it, I would have probably had a different answer. I might have said Tokyo. Quite possibly I would have said Tokyo, because it was amazing. But we've been there once, and I think sometimes when you go somewhere once, it makes it incredibly special, doesn't it? And it's unique and we had to have a map to look around because I didn't know where I was going. And they got different rides and it was exciting. It was new, there were shops everywhere, there was stuff to buy, which made it so special. And I'm desperate to go back. But at the moment, being locked in my house, which isn't a hardship, but to be locked in my house, I'm currently watching Disney World videos on YouTube and Savannah's going, Mum, really? You're really missing it, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. Because I can't go, because it's closed and I can't go. It's, yeah, it's quite painful. So Disney World, because it's my home. Um, and then Disneyland, you see, I love, because Walt was there and, and having done the walking Walt's footsteps to her and how emotional I got. I mean, I was crying when we came out to see the Mr. Lincoln exhibit. I, I was crying. I hid behind the curtain, thinking the whole of the group had walked off and they were waiting for me the other side of the curtain. And there was me with my sunglasses on with tears streaming down. And I do do ugly crying. I do. I really do. And I'm not quiet. I'm not quiet. You know, you think I do, really, am I? But, um, so they're all special. But, yeah, Disney World is my home. Yeah, my home. My friends live there, it's my, it's my home, yeah. Um, okay, what was that one? Uh, my all time favorite Disney item I own. I don't know that one. I'm gonna have to think about that. What's my all time favorite? Oh, I know what it is. And I'll put a picture in here. I've got to take a picture now, put a picture in here. And I did this, it was, it'd be two years in May, and it was the first ever proper pin collecting I ever did. Um, and to have completed the map on my own, and it's framed, it's in my living room, and people think, oh dear me, and it, but it, it's lovely, because it's a map, isn't it? And it's like a picture, and I framed it myself, and I did all of that, I bought a hot glue gun, and I did all of that, and it's just so special. And then I went on, and then one of my other favorites would be my walking Waltz Footsteps pin, because that was, it, it bought the collection with pins. And although I've stopped now, and I just get the odd one, so I get anything that's up or small world, and I'm not collecting everything else, because it's just got too, too silly and too much money, and I was just addicted to my phone, every pin sale I was on. Two o'clock in the morning, I'd be there. And, and I'd come off and go, what did I buy yesterday? Um, and you just can't keep it up, can you? So, um, so yeah, definitely my map. It's something I'll always treasure. But then there's some memories with my mum and the photos with my mum when we went for her birthday. And the memory, the memories there, maybe it's memories rather than an item. Um, yeah, maybe it's that, yeah. I've got lots of memories on that one, I should tell you those. Um, so yeah, so it's that. Uh, uh, 
favourite places to stay at Disney? What are my favourite places to stay at Disney? I like Colorado Springs, I do. But because I stayed there, was it about three times in a row last year? It kind of outwore its novelty, if that makes sense. We stayed at Animal Kingdom, which I've never done before, and that was fabulous with the balcony and seeing the savannah, and that was beautiful. And how they treated us, and they gave us a free upgrade. And it was amazing. It was just tainted because Phil had to work all the time. Um, I think the most favourite was actually the beach club. Yes, I've stayed in the beach club. It was, oh, too many years ago to remember on camera. About 13 years ago. The children were about seven and five, I seem to recall. And it was, uh, we went, we flew out, and we flew out on the 2nd of January. So you know how cold and wet and damp and everything was. And we flew into the, uh, the Pop Century, and we'd never been before. And it was before they refurbed it, got to say that, it was before it was refurbed. Um, the rooms are outside, aren't they? And I walked in the room, and, and when I took the babies away, I, oh, honestly, I used to have my own travel cot. I wasn't sleep, having them sleep in anything else because I was worried about cot death. So I took that, oh my, honestly, the things I took, it was unbelievable. And so there was nowhere to put it in the room, the room was too small. And I walked in the room and I was so upset. And, and saying it now, I'm quite ashamed of myself because it was quite pathetic really, how I behaved. I refused to take my clothes off and I slept on top of the beds. I was so upset at staying there. I mean, honestly, I give an arm and a leg to stay there now, but sometimes you just, you're in cuckoo land, aren't you? And I think I was like in cuckoo land. And we went down to reception and uh, the manager there was wonderful with us and he said he got no availability until the next day so we had to stay, stay in our clothes and um, we slept there the night and we woke up the next day still in the same flight clothes because I refused to change my clothes I just did not like the hotel didn't want to be connected with it did I don't know how stupid it sounds and how full of myself it sounds but that's honestly how I felt and um, they transferred us we didn't pay a lot more. We paid about a thousand dollars, if that, and they upgraded us to the beach club for about a thousand dollars. And when we looked it up online, because I think we'd gone with Virgin at the time, and when we looked it up online, it was over six thousand pounds for that two weeks, and we paid something like I don't know eight hundred pounds for the upgrade. Um, so yeah, so that's how I got to stay there. Um, and it was just, it was amazing. The rooms I thought were still very small because we only had a standard room, obviously. I thought they were still very small, but the beds, oh my word, the, the mattress toppers and you sunk into the bed. It was just, um, that's what I remember is the bed. Um, and because the kids were younger, I felt we didn't fit in because I hadn't taken more sophisticated clothes. Because whereas your pop century is really a family holiday and you could, you wear whatever, but the beach club, you, it's a bit more grandiose, isn't it? And, and it was amazing and I love being able to walk to Epcot. Um, yeah, I love that, love that. Oh gosh, this bring back all these memories. And I'm talking forever, aren't I? My favourite character I have ever met. Oh, I think it's Snow White on my birthday. Was it two years ago on, on, on our trip, me and Phil, on my birthday in the May? And she was so lovely with me on my birthday. And we recorded it. She was, she was really, really lovely, and it really touched me. Um, and I just love Goofy. I just love Goofy because I think I'm quite like him, really. I'm quite as tall, and I'm just as insane. So I think, yeah, definitely. Um, what else we got here? So those are all things. Because on that post, it's got ideas for videos. So I do have another post up. So let's find that. And I'm going to change the battery. It's still flashing, so I need to change it again. I need to put a new battery in before I start, don't I? So let's do that. I'm back, battery change. Right then. Michelle asks, what started my Disney obsession? <laughs> I don't really know. Um, I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> You're all going to gasp when I tell you this. There was something 
magical about Disney. There always was something magical about Disney. And maybe, maybe me winning that competition, it put something special in my heart because I got to go. I won a competition. I got to go and I took my mum. And it's for a 60th birthday, it's a special memory. Maybe that's what started it, quite possibly. Um, but over the years, I've gone in pinks and troughs. I have, I've had troughs. And it sounds like a pink, doesn't it? <laughs> No, but I, I have had troughs. Um, I've loved it, I loved it, and I loved it. And it was hard work. Anyone who's got young children and they go, the youngest they were were five and three to Florida. Blake was six months old the first time we took him to Disneyland Paris. He was six months old. I can't believe I took a six month old baby. If everyone knew how um, germaphobe I was and paranoid of germs and all the rest, you'd know that that was a big thing for me. But I bought all throwaway bottles and um, milk was sealed in carton, so I just had to snip, pour, heat. <laughs> Throw. That's how I did, that's how I did it. Um, and with the kids, I loved it, but then we started to go so often. You might want to hold on to something. I felt it was just like going to any other theme park. It was like we have theme parks in England and I thought it was similar to them. Mechanical rides, that's how I used to describe it. Oh no, another mechanical ride. I mean, that's like the worst kind of swearing anyone can do, isn't it? And I don't know really what happened. I think somehow along the way, I just started to realise the bigger picture. And I think if you just go for rides, it is just mechanical rides at the end of the day, isn't it? But when you realise the imagineering, the magic that goes into that park, things that you don't even look at, that you, you take in in your peripheral vision and you don't realise someone has thought about and put it there specifically to build the magic into layers. And it was when, when I started to see that and when I started to, to take more interest in Walt, that's when it became really magical. And when I realised that as a man, what an incredible forward thinking businessman he was and how Although he knew his legacy, because he was, I mean, before he passed, he was so important. I mean, was it United Nations and everyone were, were, were asking him to do things to try and build world unity and, and unity between countries. So he knew it was important, but unless there's a way of looking down, unless there's a way that he, he does know, that none of us really know, he, he doesn't know how much he's affected people and he doesn't realise what legacy he's actually left behind and the fact it's still growing and the pleasure that families have got and, and that was what he wanted at the, the start, at the start his initial drive was to give a place where parents and children could come together and have fun together not just sit and watch you could have fun together and obviously over time it developed and became business and uh, and then it was generating profit and he was a businessman but the initial push, that initial dream, was to create a unity with families and uh, yeah, incredibly special, yeah. Incredibly, incredibly special. And I can fly like Tinkerbell, so I'll be. <laughs> okay, uh, let's have a look. Um, how many of the parks have I been to? I have been to four of the parks, so I still have Shanghai and Hong Kong to go to but um, yeah I went to Tokyo last May for my birthday and me and Phil went on our own and uh, we should have gone for two weeks um, doing the part was amazing and we, we took the train over to Universal which I thought I just bought the tickets I didn't look I didn't think oh where on the map is it it's bound to be next door because it is in Florida yeah it isn't it isn't it <laughs> was it four and a half hours on the bullet train it took me to get there and it was like 400 pounds for two of us for the train pass something like that those are the sort of numbers in my head um, but yeah that was amazing we did that and uh, we should have gone for two weeks and gone and, uh, and seen some of the culture we didn't see any culture and it's an amazing country and the people are amazing uh, yeah Japan is, is a very very special country and uh, I've always said that the western world could learn a lot by how they, they treat 
people and each other. It, uh, yeah, it's amazing. You can't get angry there because everyone is so, so understanding and they listen to you and they try and help. And I think sometimes when we're all angry, it's because someone's not going, yes, I agree. But could we look at it this way? They're not doing that, are they? They're going, no, you're wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I really love that, really love that. Um, when did I first visit a Disney park? How much has it changed since then? Oh, it's changed loads. Loads of the rides have changed. And when I was there, we did Hollywood Studios. Animal Kingdom wasn't there. We did Hollywood Studios, Magic Kingdom, Metcot, and there was Universal, there wasn't Islands of Adventure. And there was SeaWorld, there was SeaWorld. I don't think, did I do SeaWorld with Mom? I don't think we did. Um, but I have got this memory, and I don't know where on earth it was, but I know we went, and uh, <laughs> for my mom's 60th birthday, I took her to New Orleans. Right, where on earth was New Orleans? Was it in, um, um, in Disney Springs? Was it in downtown Disney? I don't know where it was. All I know was we dressed up, we put our finery on, and we felt like a couple of prostitutes. <laughs> Everyone else is walking around in shorts and t-shirts and we're there all in black and like that is exactly how we felt seriously we did not that we know what that feels like but that was how we felt we were, felt really uncomfortable but we went to this really nice restaurant <laughs> yeah and I had a terrible experience yeah I had a terrible experience I actually ended up with food poisoning but uh yeah the waiter really upset me he did he did and I understand now that tipping is a big part of American life. At the time, I didn't. And for people in the UK, we don't normally tip. And um, you, if you do, it's not a lot at all. And um, yeah, he said to me, will madam please read the card inside? So he put a card in telling me about the tipping. So instead of letting me read it, he was pointing it out to me and that just like wound me up and he, yeah, yeah, that didn't go well. Um, yeah, and I did tip him, I did tip him, but yeah, I wasn't happy. And, um, why do they not think you can read? You can read, I don't need someone waggling it under my nose. But anyway. Um, yeah, I did end up with food poisoning, I did. And I did kind of get it all refunded when I rang up the next day, I did. And we were walking around Epcot the next day and uh, yeah, I was stopping in every toilet to throw up. Yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good day. And uh, yeah, mom wanted to eat and you know the smell of fried food. And it was it made me feel so queasy. So she actually ate that day an ice cream and a packet of peanuts because I, couldn't, I wouldn't let her eat because I felt so ill. Yeah. So yeah, we we had a lot of laughs on that trip. And she'll never forget that birthday, will she? Yeah. You can you can imagine. Anyone who knows me will know what I felt and might have said when he said that to me. But uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's that's um, uh, amazing. The rides have changed. Um, and it's just got busier, it's got a lot busier. It was like, and I think back then, to be able to go is more special, whereas now I think the world has opened up so much, which might be why we're in this situation, but it's opened up so much that you can go anywhere and it's more accessible to people. So even when you go, it's really special. It's not as special as it was then. Does that make sense? You know what I mean. Um, who is my favourite character? Just one, Jodie, really, just one. Who's my favourite character? <laughs> Mother Gothel? It is, it is. I like a good baddie. I do. I think they've got so many different parts to their personality. You unravel it, don't you? Whereas if you're good, you're good. But if you're naughty, there's a reason you're naughty. Yes, I like, I, I do, I like Mother Gothel, I do, it's really bad, that is. Um, my favourite memory of visiting any Disney park. I've got loads. I, I'm blessed to have loads. It's the one with my mum, because that will always be special. I've got the ones with Blake when we've just been on our own, and um, we have such a fabulous time when it's just the two of us, because we're so alike. And he changes, he he ages many years when he goes away with me. It makes me sound really old and boring, doesn't it? But he protects me, 
So for anyone, any mums with a son, you know what I mean? He protects me, he'll carry my bags, he'll go get me drinks. He'll do things that he won't do here, even if I stand at the top of the stairs and yell at him. He, he, he's very, very caring. So those are special. And the fact we did Toy Story together and he got up at four o'clock, whatever clock we went up to that. And it was just us. Um, and when he saw Dev walking through the, the park, Prince Charming Dev, and he yelled and he said, Mom, Mom. And so those are special memories. And then I've got the special memories, my first trip on my own this summer and getting to spend time with Dana. Um, yeah, that was that was amazing meeting all my wonderful friends there. Um, really, yeah, some some amazing ones. And the next big one is Sav wants to get married there. Now the, the issue with that is we've got to get a boyfriend first, <laughs> and he needs to be rich. That's the second one. But uh, yeah, so that'll be nice, won't it? <laughs> She's already pre-warned me. I'm like, oh, good God, right. So then, next, next, next. Uh, Favourite Disney trip memory? Um, I think it's that one with my mum. I really think it's that one with my mum, with the waiter in that restaurant, because he was pri that was priceless, that was priceless. Yeah, one day when I've had a naughty coke, I'll tell you what the conversation was, because that's really interesting. Now you're all going to say, what was it, Karen? Yeah, yeah. Um, Madam can read and Madam doesn't need somebody else to point it out. Because he said to me, Madam, did you read it? <laughs> yes, Madam can read. Really, honestly. Honestly, anyway. Um, what made me start my YouTube channel? Oh, that's an easy one. Phil. Phil made me start it. And uh, it was two years ago, as you know, coming up in April. And I'd had um, anxiety a few years before. What, about five, six years ago? I'd had anxiety. And um, I was having like a relapse, if you like. You can feel it coming on. Anyone who's got it, you know, because you can feel it coming on. Um, and I worry, I'm a worrier. And it was starting to come on and I was starting to feel really anxious about things. And um, I'd been to the doctor and I'd taken my, my tablets, my anxiety tablets. And they weren't working, but they don't. It takes two weeks to work. And so we did two things. First of all, he booked a trip for us both to go to Florida on our own. <laughs> the next day, my tablets kicked in. <laughs> I think it was, it was fabulous. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, and he said to me, we got a few holidays books. He said, you should do this. You'd be really good at this. You like to talk to people and you should really do it. And that's how it started. And I'd gone upstairs and I got my camera and I've always liked cameras. And I got um, a Canon, it was an automatic one, but it's what you call a bridge camera, so it's not a compact and it's not a big SLR, that's one of the ones you take the lenses off and you swap them, the big, the big proper, proper boy cameras if you like. And it was one of them and I bought myself a, a tripod, a little tripod, and I put this camera on and it went, <laughs> it was so heavy, it was so heavy and I went, it's alright, I can't do it, it's too heavy. And he went, how much is the camera you need? <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> yes. So, and he said, oh, go on then. And so, yeah, I had a camera for my birthday that, that year. And uh, that's how it started. Yep, didn't know how to edit. I watched um, a video, Prince Charming Dev did a video. And he showed us how to edit. And um, I reached out to my wonderful, beautiful friend, Melissa. And uh, she didn't know who I was. This crazy British woman uh, messaging her. And asking her, and because of my anxiety, I was worried about things like music license and copyright, and and she held my hand all the way through it, and uh, I will never be able to thank her enough. And uh, we've grown to be amazing friends, and um, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's not just putting videos out there. It's the people you meet along the way who change your life, and she's changed my life. And then I got to meet a uh, sister Mitzi. And what's really, I've got a funny story about that. I might have told this before. But when I was looking at her profile and everything, when we'd started talking, I, I followed or friend requested Mitzi. And then I thought, ooh, that's a bit like a stalker. So then I took her off. <laughs> and yeah, as you know, uh, Mitzi, Melissa and Dana and myself were thick as thieves. And uh, yeah, it just shows, doesn't it? It just shows. Um, uh, 
favourite, what's my favourite childhood memory? I am very blessed. I have amazing parents who were so wonderful and so kind and uh, they gave us lots of memories from holidays and Christmas. Um. <laughs> My mum's a cheeky one, you know. I wonder where I get it from. And uh, <laughs> My mum hates wrapping presents. I get that. Every Christmas, you know what she used to do to me? She used to put my presents in plastic bags and tell me it was for Auntie Elsa, Elsa, Auntie Elsie, Auntie Eva, and get me to wrap them up. And I was in fact wrapping up my own Christmas presents. Can you believe that? I mean, I've got that many memories. I've got that many memories. We used to go home for school lunch and uh, she always cooked us a proper meal. And I still have my mum and my dad. And she used to cook us a proper meal. And um, she used to do a lot of onion gravy. So there would be me at lunchtime stirring onion gravy in the kitchen and then when I went back to school I just stunk of onions and onions smell like B.O. <laughs> I'm just a killer. Then another time she used to have me making pickled onions at Christmas but no gloves so I used to have yellow fingers for a week it looked like I'd done chain smoking or um, the Christmases would come down the things they used to hide holidays yeah, um, oh, famous Christmas memory is um, we used to have a party every Christmas morning. Now, we, we never gave parties. Um, my my mum's quite private, and so we never had a party. But Christmas morning, we used to invite all the neighbours in. And between me and my dad, we used to see who could get who the drunkest. <laughs> it was never actually like a competition, but it was like something we both did. Um, yeah, and I remember my friend's mum. Uh, Tracy, her mum Joyce, um, going off up the road and she did Sherry and, and Sheila and Alf and yeah it was hilarious and them calling for their husbands to get them because they were still the terror I was drinking and they were trying to serve the turkey up so yeah some, some amazing, I, I'm, I'm very blessed, very blessed, very blessed. Um, uh, okay Where where would I want to travel to other than the US? Um, we don't go. We tend not to go through travel agents. Um, Amanda's asked me if I use a specific travel agent. We tend not to use travel agents because we find they're so expensive. And I think once you've travelled a lot, you get more confident. So, so what we tend to do is we go online and we find the cheapest flight. Uh, we go into a search engine. So we do the flight and then we look at the hotel price and we go on to all the different comparison sites, find the cheapest price for the hotel and book it that way. I think especially with America, because it's like so much like home, we're quite confident. But then again, when I go somewhere a bit more exotic, so when we went to the Dominican Republic, when Savannah and I went um, last summer, I didn't have the same sort of confidence because of even though I'd worked there years and years ago, I didn't know how it had changed and we were flying into a different part of the island. So for that, I booked a package holiday. Um, so where, even Japan, we booked independently. We didn't go through a firm. Um, so where would I like to go to next? I want to do the two um, other Disney parks. I do, I want to do Hong Kong and Shanghai. But the trip that I'd most want to do was the one I wanted to do with Savannah, but she really didn't want to do it. And I wanted to do an across, the Mer across America trip. And it's something I'd like to do with Phil and hire like a Winnie Bago and travel uh, and, and do that. I'd love, I'd love to do that, go to every state and, and, and see places, you know, take a year doing it. And uh, yeah, I'd love to do that. That would be a dream come true. I want to go to, uh, Shanghai and China. I've been, I worked in the Soviet Union. Uh, I did, I spent a year there. I travelled that extensively. I've been to Africa. I've been to North Africa. I haven't been to South Africa. Um, I've never been to South America. I have done a lot. I've never been to New Zealand or Australia yet. And that's key word is yet. I love travelling. And I think sometimes what we found last year was the fact that Tokyo was a brand new experience 
it was really exciting. You know when something's so super exciting because you've never done it before? And I think we realised that keep doing the same thing every year, you need to put something in between as well to break it up to give you some spontaneity back. Um, but yeah, a cross country trip in America, that's what I'd love to do. Um, no, Tina, I have never been to the Disney or Lani Resort. Um, I have thought about going there, but the only thing I've got is, it's more like going to just a hotel, isn't it, rather than going to a park. So I think it, for me, it would be great to go, but combine it with a park as well. And I'd probably do that bit first and then the park because I get really, I get really bored. I start to twitch. Lying in the sun all day is not for me. It drives me insane. I like to go and see and do. I like a suntan, but I like to see and do. And so for me, if I'd been to a park and then had to lie still afterwards, yeah, I wouldn't like that. But if I've laid still and chilled and then I went to the park, I think that would be the best thing. I'd love to go. And they also have Simply Gilded washing. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to get your shops in, haven't you? Right. I will show you, Amy wants to see my complete up collection. I will do, but at the moment, I haven't even got it on a board. It's in bags. I did, I did, I did, so I've got to do that. Uh, <laughs> What's a day like in your household? Absolutely crazy. And with four of us in it and three dogs, it's a bit insane. Thankfully, the weather's nice so we can spread outside. And at the moment, Phil is in the hot tub. He is, and he's got his music on, and I keep going lower, lower, because I can hear it in here. I don't want to be done for copyright. Um, but it's a ni it's nice weather, so it's nice, because we can have the windows open and we can sit outside. But when it's bad weather and we're all in the house, even though it's not the smallest of houses, it's definitely not the biggest of houses, um, we all get under each other's feet. So this room, my dining room, which is mission command for me, is my space. Um, so yeah, so I'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know what it's like for them, but I'll be all right. And then Deb, Deb's is the last question on here. And it said, if you had to choose only one over 21 beverage, I don't know what you're on about, Deb. I, I, ne I, Deb, I never, never have a drink. Would it be a nice glass of wine or a naughty Coke? That depends. That would depend. If I'm eating a meal, I like a nice glass of chilled rosé. But I like the clear rosé, so like the cheaper rosés. I don't like the heavy ones um, when they give me a headache. I like the ones that are more like pop, a bit more, you taste like strawberries and they're not potent, potent. I, I like a nice glass of that with a meal. Um, but if I'm sat watching television or chilling or or what have you and I decide I want to have a no and I don't have a naughty coke every night I don't have a drink every night I'm sure everyone thinks I do but I, do, I really don't um but if I do uh, I like a naughty coke but I don't have a short one I have a long one and so you know the Starbucks uh, screw on mugs with the straws I put a little bit of rum in the bottom loads of ice I love ice I can't drink cold drinks without ice and then lots of diet coke and so it's more for the taste than for the effect. Um, but yeah, so it depends if I'm eating or if I'm chilling. Um, but yeah, more times than not, I just have a Diet Coke or a cup of tea anyway. So, but yeah, so that's what I like. And that's it for the moment. So those are all the questions. I don't know how long this has been, um, but I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, it makes you think, doesn't it? When people ask you questions and, and it makes you think about things. But yeah, the memories with my mum going away are incredibly special. Incredibly, incredibly special. And um, we never thought that we'd be able to do that because when my mum, uh, when I was very young, she was told she had five years to live. Um, and during that time, they developed transplant. She had a diseased liver and uh, she was 189th in the UK to have a liver transplant. And that has been uh 32 years ago and i've still got her and without that we wouldn't have had those memories without that kindness of that poor family that lost that poor person we wouldn't have had kindness and so those memories are even more special and uh, yeah i've still got them and i love them to pieces so yeah really lovely memories really lovely but anyway there's me going on again you see i can't just stop i love talking to you that's it but be good, be kind. Tomorrow we've got a planning video. 
and it's a box swap and uh, yeah a group of us have got together and it's still sat down I still haven't opened it um, so I'm either going to get up really really early and then publish it or do it live I, I still haven't decided what I'm doing and it's going live at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time which will be 2 p.m. here in the UK so it's going live so if I'm going to record it I need to get really early don't I to get it edited and uploaded but I like having something to do every day because it's keeping my brain occupied and you know I need that don't you but anyway be good be kind take care of yourselves please keep yourselves all really really safe and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for a daily dose number three Bye for now, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.